Mahayana, Sanskrit for great vehicle, is one of two main existing branches of Buddhism, the other being Theravada, and a term for classification of Buddhist philosophies and practice. This movement added a further set of discourses, and although it was initially small in India, it had long-term historical significance. The Buddhist tradition of Vajrayana is sometimes classified as a part of Mahayana Buddhism, but some scholars consider it to be a different branch altogether. According to the teachings of Mahayana traditions, Mahayana also refers to the path of the Bodhisattva seeking complete enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, also called Bodhisattvayana or the Bodhisattva vehicle. A Bodhisattva who has accomplished this goal is called a Samyaksambuddha, or fully enlightened Buddha. A Samyaksambuddha can establish the Dharma and lead disciples to enlightenment. Mahayana Buddhists teach that enlightenment can be attained in a single lifetime, and this can be accomplished even by a layperson. The Mahayana tradition is the largest major tradition of Buddhism existing today, with 53.2% of practitioners, compared to 35.8% for Theravada and 5.7% for Vajrayana in 2010. In the course of its history, Mahayana Buddhism spread from India to various other South, East, and Southeast Asian countries such as Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, China. China, Taiwan, Mongolia, Korea, Japan, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore. Mahayana Buddhism also spread to other South and Southeast Asian countries, such as Afghanistan, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, the Maldives, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Burma, Iran and other Central Asian countries before being replaced by Theravada Buddhism or other religions. Large Mahayana scholastic centers thrived during the latter period of Buddhism in India, between the 7th and 12th centuries. Major traditions of Mahayana Buddhism today include Chan Buddhism, Korean Seon, Japanese Zen, Pure Land Buddhism, Nichiren Buddhism and Vietnamese Buddhism. It may also include the Vajrayana traditions of Tiantai, Tendai, Shingon Buddhism, and Tibetan Buddhism, which add esoteric teachings to the Mahayana tradition. Etymology According to Jan Nadir, the term Mahayana great vehicle", was originally an honorary synonym for bodhisattvayana bodhisattva vehicle". the vehicle of a bodhisattva seeking Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. The term Mahayana which had earlier been used simply as an epithet for Buddhism itself was therefore adopted at an early date as a synonym for the path and the teachings of the bodhisattvas. Since it was simply an honorary term for bodhisattvayana, the adoption of the term Mahayana and its application to bodhisattvayana did not represent a significant turning point in the development of a Mahayana tradition. The earliest Mahayana texts often use the term Mahayana as a synonym for bodhisattvayana, but the term Hinayana is comparatively rare in the earliest sources. The presumed dichotomy between Mahayana and Hinayana can be deceptive, as the two terms were not actually formed in relation to one another in the same era. Among the earliest and most important references to Mahayana are those that occur in the Lotus Sutra, Skt. Sadharma Pundarika Sutra, dating between the first century BCE and the first century CE. Saishi Karashima has suggested that the term first used in an earlier Gandhari Prakrit version of the Lotus Sutra was not the term Mahayana but the Prakrit word Mahajana in the sense of Mahajnana great knowing. At a later stage when the early Prakrit word was converted into Sanskrit, this Mahajana, being phonetically ambivalent, was mistakenly converted into Mahayana, possibly because of what may have been a double meaning in the famous parable of the burning house, which talks of three vehicles or carts skt, yana. History Origins The origins of Mahayana are still not completely understood. The earliest Western views of Mahayana assumed that it existed as a separate school in competition with the so-called Hinayana schools. The earliest Mahayana texts often depict strict adherence to the path of a bodhisattva, an engagement in the ascetic ideal of a monastic life in the wilderness, akin to the ideas expressed in the Rhinoceros Sutra. The earliest textual evidence of Mahayana comes from sutras originating around the beginning of the Common Era. Jan Nadir has noted that some of the earliest Mahayana texts, such as the Ugrapariparsha Sutra, use the term Mahayana 
Yet there is no doctrinal difference between Mahayana in this context and the early schools, and that Mahayana referred rather to the rigorous emulation of Gautama Buddha in the path of a bodhisattva seeking to become a fully enlightened Buddha. There is also no evidence that Mahayana ever referred to a separate formal school or sect of Buddhism, but rather that it existed as a certain set of ideals, and later doctrines, for bodhisattvas. Paul Williams has also noted that the Mahayana never had nor ever attempted to have a separate Vinaya or ordination lineage from the early schools of Buddhism, and therefore each bhikkhu or bisuni adhering to the Mahayana formally belonged to an early school. Membership in these Nikayas, or monastic sects, continues today with the Dharmaguptaka Nikaya in East Asia, and the Mulasarvastivada Nikaya in Tibetan Buddhism. Therefore, Mahayana was never a separate rival sect of the early schools. Paul Harrison clarifies that while monastic Mahayanists belonged to a Nikaya, not all members of a Nikaya were Mahayanists. From Chinese monks visiting India, we now know that both Mahayana and non-Mahayana monks in India often lived in the same monasteries side by side. It is also possible that, formally, Mahayana would have been understood as a group of monks or nuns within a larger monastery taking a vow together known as a Kriyakarma to memorize and study a Mahayana text or texts. The Chinese monk Yijing, who visited India in the 7th century CE, distinguishes Mahayana from Hinayana as follows Both adopt one and the same Vinaya, and they have in common the prohibitions of the five offences, and also the practice of the Four Noble Truths. Those who venerate the Bodhisattvas and read the Mahayana Sutras are called the Mahayanists, while those who do not perform these are called the Hinayanists. Much of the early extant evidence for the origins of Mahayana comes from early Chinese translations of Mahayana texts. These Mahayana teachings were first propagated into China by Lokaksima, the first translator of Mahayana sutras into Chinese during the 2nd century CE. <laughs> Earliest Mahayana sutras Based on the testimony of Kandrakirti 7th cent, several scholars have suggested that the Prajnaparamita sutras, which are among the earliest Mahayana sutras, developed among the Mahasamgika along the Kursna River in the Andhra region of southern India. However, more recently Saishi Karashima has argued for their origin in the Gandhara region. The earliest Mahayana sutras include the very first versions of the Prajnaparamita genre, along with texts concerning Aksobhya Buddha, which were probably written down in the 1st century BCE in the south of India. Guang Xing states. Several scholars have suggested the Prajnaparamita probably developed among the Mahasamgikas in southern India, in the Andhra country, on the Kursna River. A. K. Warder believes that, "...the Mahayana originated in the south of India and almost certainly in the Andhra country." Anthony Barber and Sri Padma note that, "...historians of Buddhist thought have been aware for quite some time that such pivotally important Mahayana Buddhist thinkers as Nagarjuna, Dignaga, Kendrakirti, Aryadeva, and Bhavaviveka, among many others, formulated their theories while living in Buddhist communities in Andhra." They note that the ancient Buddhist sites in the lower Kursna Valley, including Amaravati, Nagarjunakanda and Jagayapeta, can be traced to at least the 3rd century BCE, if not earlier." Akira Hirakawa notes the, "...evidence suggests that many early Mahayana scriptures originated in South India." Some scholars think that the earliest Mahayana sutras were mainly composed in the south of India, and later the activity of writing additional scriptures was continued in the north. However, the assumption that the presence of an evolving body of Mahayana scriptures implies the contemporaneous existence of distinct religious movement called Mahayana may be a serious misstep. Some scholars further speculate that the Prajnaparamita sutras were written in response to the ultrarealism of Abhidharma. Some early Mahayana sutras were translated by the Kusana monk Lokaksima, who came to China from the kingdom of Gandhara. His first translations to Chinese were made in the Chinese capital of Luoyang between 178 and 189 CE. Some Mahayana sutras translated during the 2nd century CE include the following Astasahasrika Prajnaparamita Sutra Vimalakirti Nirdesa Sutra Larger Sukhavadivyuha Sutra Aksobhyantathagatejavyuha Sutra Ugrapariparsha Sutra Manjusrapariparsha Sutra Drumakinararajaparipursha Sutra Sarangama Samadhi Sutra Bhadrapala Sutra 
Ajatasatrakaukartyavinodana Sutra Kasyapaparavarta Sutra Lokanuvartana Sutra An early sutra connected to the Avatamsaka Sutra This corpus of texts often emphasizes ascetic practices and forest dwelling, absorbed in states of meditative concentration. Harrison points to the enthusiasm in the Lokaksima Sutra corpus for the extra ascetic practices, for dwelling in the forest, and above all for states of meditative absorption Meditation and meditative states seem to have occupied a central place in early Mahayana, certainly because of their spiritual efficacy but also because they may have given access to fresh revelations and inspiration. Earliest inscriptions The earliest stone inscription containing a recognizably Mahayana formulation and a mention of the Buddha Amitabha was found in the Indian subcontinent in Mathura, and dated to around 180 CE. Remains of a statue of a Buddha bear the Brahmi inscription, "...made in the year 28 of the reign of King Huviska for the Blessed One, the Buddha Amitabha." There is also some evidence that Emperor Huviska himself was a follower of Mahayana Buddhism, and a Sanskrit manuscript fragment in the Shoyan collection describes Huviska as having set forth in the Mahayana. Evidence of the name Mahayana in Indian inscriptions in the period before the 5th century is very limited in comparison to the multiplicity of Mahayana writings transmitted from Central Asia to China at that time. Early Mahayana Buddhism During the period of early Mahayana Buddhism, four major types of thought developed, Madhyamaka, Yogacara, Buddha nature and Buddhist logic as the last and most recent. In India, the two main philosophical schools of the Mahayana were the Madhyamaka and the later Yogacara. During the Kushan Empire, Mahayana Buddhism teachings encouraged societies to give generous donations to the Buddhist monasteries, which gave the people religious merits. Earlier stage forms of Mahayana, such as the doctrines of Prajnaparamita, Yogacara, Buddha nature, and the Pure Land teachings, are still popular in East Asia. In some cases, these have spawned new developments, while in others, they are treated in the more traditional syncretic manner. Paul Williams has noted that in this tradition in the Far East, primacy has always been given to study of the sutras. <laughs> Late Mahayana Buddhism Various classes of Vajrayana literature developed as a result of royal courts sponsoring both Buddhism and Savism. The Manjusramalakalpa, which later came to classified under Kriyatantra, states that mantras taught in the Shaiva, Garuda and Vaishnava tantras will be effective if applied by Buddhists since they were all taught originally by Manjushri. The Guyasiddhi of Padmavajra, a work associated with the Guyasamaja tradition, prescribes acting as a Shaiva guru and initiating members into Saiva Sadhana scriptures and mandalas. The Samvara Tantra texts adopted the Pitha list from the Shaiva text Tantrasadbhava, introducing a copying error where a deity was mistaken for a place. <laughs> <laughs> Doctrine Few things can be said with certainty about Mahayana Buddhism, especially its early Indian form, other than that the Buddhism practiced in China, Indonesia, Vietnam, Korea, Tibet, and Japan is Mahayana Buddhism. Mahayana can be described as a loosely bound collection of many teachings with large and expansive doctrines that are able to exist simultaneously. Mahayana constitutes an inclusive tradition characterized by plurality and the adoption of new Mahayana sutras in addition to the earlier agamas. Mahayana sees itself as penetrating further and more profoundly into the Buddha's dharma. An Indian commentary on the Mahayana Samgraha, entitled Vivartagyahyarthapandavyaya, gives a classification of teachings according to the capabilities of the audience. A see according to disciples' grades, the dharma is classified as inferior and superior. For example, the inferior was taught to the merchants Tripusa and Balaka because they were ordinary men, the middle was taught to the group of five because they were at the stage of saints, the eightfold Prajnaparamitas were taught to Bodhisattvas, and the Prajnaparamitas are superior in eliminating conceptually imagined forms. There is also a tendency in Mahayana sutras to regard adherence to these sutras as generating spiritual benefits greater than those that arise from being a follower of the non-Mahayana approaches to Dharma. 
Thus the Sramaladevi Simanata Sutra claims that the Buddha said that devotion to Mahayana is inherently superior in its virtues to following the Sravaka or Pratyekabuddha paths. The fundamental principles of Mahayana doctrine were based on the possibility of universal liberation from dukkha for all beings, hence the great vehicle and the existence of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas embodying Buddha nature. The Pure Land school of Mahayana simplifies the expression of faith by allowing salvation to be alternatively obtained through the grace of the Buddha Amitabha by having faith and devoting oneself to mindfulness of the Buddha. This devotional lifestyle of Buddhism has greatly contributed to the success of Mahayana in East Asia, where spiritual elements traditionally relied upon mindfulness of the Buddha, mantras and dharanis, and reading sutras. In Chinese Buddhism, most monks, let alone lay people, practice pure land, some combining it with Chan Buddhism. Most Mahayana schools believe in supernatural bodhisattvas who devote themselves to the paramitas, ultimate knowledge, and the liberation of all sentient beings. Bodhisattva <inaudible> <inaudible> The Mahayana tradition holds that pursuing only the release from suffering and attainment of nirvana is too narrow an aspiration, because it lacks the motivation of actively resolving to liberate all other sentient beings from samsara suffering. One who engages in this path is called a bodhisattva. Bodhisattvas could reach nirvana, but they believe it is more important to help others on their path of finding nirvana rather than committing fully to nirvana themselves. The defining characteristic of a bodhisattva is bodhicitta, the intention to achieve omniscient Buddhahood as fast as possible, so that one may benefit infinite sentient beings. Sometimes the term bodhisattva is used more restrictively to refer to those sentient beings on the grounds. As Ananda Kumaraswamy notes, the most essential part of the Mahayana is its emphasis on the bodhisattva ideal, which replaces that of the arhat, or ranks before it." According to Mahayana teachings, being a high-level bodhisattva involves possessing a mind of great compassion and prajna to realize the reality of inherent emptiness and dependent origination. Mahayana teaches that the practitioner will finally realize the attainment of Buddhahood. Six paramitas are traditionally required for bodhisattvas. Dana Paramita, the perfection of giving Sila Paramita, the perfection of behavior and discipline Kasanti Paramita, the perfection of forbearance Virya Paramita, the perfection of vigor and diligence Dhyana Paramita, the perfection of meditation Prajna Paramita, the perfection of transcendent wisdom Expedient means Expedient means is found in the Lotus Sutra, one of the earliest dated sutras, and is accepted in all Mahayana schools of thought. It is any effective method that aids awakening. It does not necessarily mean that some particular method is «untrue», but is simply any means or stratagem that is conducive to spiritual growth and leads beings to awakening and nirvana. Expedient means could thus be certain motivational words for a particular listener or even the Noble Eightfold Path itself. Basic Buddhism what Mahayana would term or is an expedient method for helping people begin the noble Buddhist path and advance quite far. But the path is not wholly traversed, according to some schools, until the practitioner has striven for and attained Buddhahood for the liberation of all other sentient beings from suffering. Some scholars have stated that the exercise of expedient means, the ability to adapt one's message to the audience, is also of enormous importance in the Pali Canon. In fact the Pali term Upaya Kosala does occur in the Pali Canon, in the Sangiti Sutta of the Diga Nikaya. <inaudible> Liberation Mahayana Buddhism includes a rich cosmology, with various Buddhas and Bodhisattvas residing in different worlds and Buddha realms. The concept of the three bodies supports these constructions, making the Buddha himself a transcendental figure. Dr. Guang Xing describes the Mahayana Buddha as, "...an omnipotent divinity endowed with numerous supernatural attributes and qualities he is described almost as an omnipotent and almighty godhead." Under various conditions, the realms Buddha presides over could be attained by devotees after their death so, when reborn, they could strive towards Buddhahood in the best possible conditions. 
Depending on the sect, liberation into a Buddha realm can be obtained by faith, visualization, or sometimes even by the repetition of Buddha's name. These practices are common in Pure Land Buddhism. Dr. Guang Xing, The Three Bodies of the Buddha, The Origin and Development of the Trikaya Theory, Routledgekersen, Oxford, 2005, p. 1. <laughs> Buddha nature Buddha nature, Buddha Dhatu or Buddha principle (SKT), Buddha Dhatu, Tathagatagarbha, JPN, Busho, is taught differently in various Mahayana Buddhism traditions. Broadly speaking, Buddha nature is concerned with ascertaining what allows sentient beings to become Buddhas. The term Buddha nature is a translation of the Sanskrit coinage Buddha Dhatu, which seems first to have appeared in the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra, where it refers to a sacred nature that is the basis for beings becoming Buddhas", and where it is also spoken of as the self Atman, it is called Tathagatagarbha Buddha Dhatu at the stage of sentient beings because it is covered with defilements, and it is called Dharmakaya at the stage of Buddhahood, because its pure nature is revealed. The teaching of a Buddha nature SKT, Tathagatagarbha may be based on the luminous mind concept found in the Agamas. The essential idea, articulated in the Buddha Nature Sutras, but not accepted by all Mahayanists, is that no being is without a concealed but indestructible interior link to the awakening of Bodhi and that this link is an uncreated element dhatu or principle deep inside each being, which constitutes the deathless, diamond-like, essence of the self. The Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra states, "...the essence of the self is the subtle Buddha nature." While the later Lankavatara Sutra states that the Buddha nature might be taken to be self Atman, but it is not. In the Sagathakam section of that same sutra, however, the Tathagatagarbha as the self is not denied, but affirmed, "...the Atma self characterized with purity as the state of self-realization, this is the Tathagata's womb garba, which does not belong to the realm of the theorizers." In the Buddha nature class of sutras, the word, "...self." Atman is used in a way defined by and specific to these sutras. See Atman Buddhism. According to some scholars, the Buddha nature discussed in some Mahayana sutras does not represent a substantial self, Atman. Rather, it is a positive language and expression of emptiness, sunyata, and represents the potentiality to realize Buddhahood through Buddhist practices. It is the true self in representing the innate aspect of the individual that makes actualizing the ultimate personality possible, the actual «seeing and knowing» of this Buddha essence is said to usher in nirvanic liberation. This Buddha essence or «Buddha nature» is stated to be found in every single person, ghost, god and sentient being. In the Buddha Nature Sutras, the Buddha is portrayed as describing the Buddha essence as uncreated, deathless and ultimately beyond rational grasping or conceptualization. Yet, it is this already real and present, hidden internal element of awakeness bodhi that, according to the Buddha Nature Sutras, prompts beings to seek liberation from worldly suffering, and lets them attain the spotless bliss that lies at the heart of their being. Once the veils of negative thoughts, feelings, and unwholesome behavior the classes are eliminated from the mind and character, the indwelling Buddha principle Buddha Dhatu, Buddha nature can shine forth unimpededly and transform the seer into a Buddha. Prior to the period of these sutras, Mahayana metaphysics was dominated by teachings on emptiness, in the form of Madhyamaka philosophy. The language used by this approach is primarily negative, and the Buddha nature genre of sutras can be seen as an attempt to state orthodox Buddhist teachings of dependent origination and on the mysterious reality of nirvana using positive language instead, to prevent people from being turned away from Buddhism by a false impression of nihilism. In these sutras, the perfection of the wisdom of not self is stated to be the true self. The ultimate goal of the path is then characterized using a range of positive language that had been used in Indian philosophy previously by essentialist philosophers, but was now transmuted into a new Buddhist vocabulary that described a being who has successfully completed the Buddhist path. A different view is propounded by Tathagatagarbha specialist, Michael Zimmerman, who sees key Buddha nature sutras such as the Nirvana Sutra and the Tathagatagarbha Sutra, as well as the the Lankavatara Sutra, enunciating an affirmative vision of an eternal, indestructible Buddhic self. Zimmerman observes, The existence of an eternal, imperishable self, that is, Buddhahood, is definitely the basic point of the TGS Sutra. 
The Mahaparinirvana Sutra and the Lankavatara Sutra characterize the Tathagatagarbha explicitly as Atman self. The Uttaratantra an exegetical treatise on Buddha nature sees Buddha nature not as caused and conditioned samskrta, but as eternal, uncaused, unconditioned, and incapable of being destroyed, although temporarily concealed within worldly beings by adventitious defilements. According to C. D. Sebastian, the Uttaratantra's reference to a transcendental self should be understood as the unique essence of the universe. Thus the universal and immanent essence of Buddha nature is the same throughout time and space. Scriptures Agamas Mahayana Buddhism takes the basic teachings of the Buddha as recorded in early scriptures as the starting point of its teachings, such as those concerning karma and rebirth, anatman, emptiness, dependent origination, and the Four Noble Truths. Mahayana Buddhists in East Asia have traditionally studied these teachings in the agamas preserved in the Chinese Buddhist canon. Agama is the term used by those traditional Buddhist schools in India who employed Sanskrit for their basic canon. These correspond to the Nikayas used by the Theravada school. The surviving Agamas in Chinese translation belong to at least two schools, while most of the Agamas teachings were never translated into Tibetan. In addition to accepting the essential scriptures of the early Buddhist schools as valid, Mahayana Buddhism maintains large collections of sutras that are not used or recognized by the Theravada school. These were not recognized by some individuals in the early Buddhist schools. In other cases, Buddhist communities were divided along these doctrinal lines. In Mahayana Buddhism, the Mahayana Sutras are often given greater authority than the Agamas. The first of these Mahayana-specific writings were written probably around the 1st century BCE or 1st century CE. In the 4th century Mahayana Abhidharma work Abhidharmasamukkaya, a Sangha refers to the collection which contains the Agamas as the Sravakapitaka and associates it with the Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas. A Sangha classifies the Mahayana Sutras as belonging to the Bodhisattvapitaka, which is designated as the collection of teachings for bodhisattvas. <laughs> Turnings of the Dharma Wheel Dating back at least to the Samdhanirmocana Sutra is a classification of the corpus of Buddhism into three categories, based on ways of understanding the nature of reality, known as the three turnings of the Dharma wheel". According to this view, there were three such «turnings». In the first turning, the Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths at Varanasi for those in the Sravaka vehicle. It is described as marvelous and wonderful, but requiring interpretation and occasioning controversy. The doctrines of the first turning are exemplified in the Dharmakakra Pravartana Sutra. This turning represents the earliest phase of the Buddhist teachings and the earliest period in the history of Buddhism. In the second turning, the Buddha taught the Mahayana teachings to the bodhisattvas, teaching that all phenomena have no essence, no arising, no passing away, are originally quiescent, and essentially in cessation. This turning is also described as marvelous and wonderful, but requiring interpretation and occasioning controversy. Doctrine of the second turning is established in the Prajnaparamita teachings, first put into writing around 100 BCE. In Indian philosophical schools, it is exemplified by the Madhyamaka school of Nagarjuna. In the third turning, the Buddha taught similar teachings to the second turning, but for everyone in the three vehicles, including all the sravakas, pratyekabuddhas, and bodhisattvas. These were meant to be completely explicit teachings in their entire detail, for which interpretations would not be necessary, and controversy would not occur. These teachings were established by the Samdhanirmocana Sutra as early as the 1st or 2nd century CE. In the Indian philosophical schools, the third turning is exemplified by the Yogacara school of Asanga and Vasubandhu. Some traditions of Tibetan Buddhism consider the teachings of esoteric Buddhism and Vajrayana to be the third turning of the Dharma wheel. Tibetan teachers, particularly of the Gelugpa school, regard the second turning as the highest teaching, because of their particular interpretation of Yogacara doctrine. The Buddha nature teachings are normally included in the third turning of the wheel. The Chinese tradition has a different scheme. The Chinese Tin Te believed the Buddha taught over five periods. These are The Flower Garland period The Agama period 
the correct and equal period provisional Mahayana sutras, including the Amida, Mahavirachana and Vimalakirti sutras. The wisdom period perfection of wisdom sutras. The lotus and nirvana period when Shakyamuni taught from the standpoint of his enlightenment. Early canon Scholars have noted that many key Mahayana ideas are closely connected to the earliest texts of Buddhism. The seminal work of Mahayana philosophy, Nagarjuna's Mulamadhyamakakarika, mentions the canon's Katyayana Sutra by name, and may be an extended commentary on that work. Nagarjuna systematized the Madhyamaka school of Mahayana philosophy. He may have arrived at his positions from a desire to achieve a consistent exegesis of the Buddha's doctrine as recorded in the canon. In his eyes the Buddha was not merely a forerunner, but the very founder of the Madhyamaka system. Nagarjuna also referred to a passage in the canon regarding nirvanic consciousness. In two different works, Yogacara, the other prominent Mahayana school in dialectic with the Madhyamaka school, gave a special significance to the canon's lesser discourse on emptiness MA 190. A passage there which the discourse itself emphasizes is often quoted in later Yogacara texts as a true definition of emptiness. According to Walpola Rahula, the thought presented in the Yogacara school's Abhidharma Samukhaya is undeniably closer to that of the Pali Nikayas than is that of the Theravadan Abhidhamma. Both the Madhyamikas and the Yogacarans saw themselves as preserving the Buddhist middle way between the extremes of nihilism everything is unreal and substantialism substantial entities existing. The Yogacarans criticized the Madhyamikas for tending towards nihilism, while the Madhyamikas criticized the Yogacarans for tending towards substantialism. Key Mahayana texts introducing the concepts of bodhicitta and Buddha nature also use language parallel to passages in the canon containing the Buddha's description of luminous mind and appear to have evolved from this idea. Topic: <laughs> Theravada school. Topic: Role of the Bodhisattva. In the early Buddhist texts, and as taught by the modern Theravada school, the goal of becoming a teaching Buddha in a future life is viewed as the aim of a small group of individuals striving to benefit future generations after the current Buddha's teachings have been lost. But in the current age, there is no need for most practitioners to aspire to this goal. Theravada texts do, however, hold that this is a more perfectly virtuous goal. Paul Williams writes that some modern Theravada meditation masters in Thailand are popularly regarded as bodhisattvas. Cholvahan observes that prominent figures associated with the self perspective in Thailand have often been famous outside scholarly circles as well, among the wider populace, as Buddhist meditation masters and sources of miracles and sacred amulets. Like perhaps some of the early Mahayana forest hermit monks, or the later Buddhist tantrics, they have become people of power through their meditative achievements. They are widely revered, worshipped, and held to be arhats or note bodhisattvas. <laughs> Theravada and Hinayana In the 7th century, the Chinese Buddhist monk Xuanzang describes the concurrent existence of the Mahavihara and the Abhyagiri Vihara in Sri Lanka. He refers to the monks of the Mahavihara as the Hinayana Staviras, Theras, and the monks of the Abhyagiri Vihara as the Mahayana Staviras. Xuanzang further writes, the Mahaviharvasins reject the Mahayana and practice the Hinayana, while the Abhyagiravaharvasins study both Hinayana and Mahayana teachings and propagate the Tripit aka. The modern Theravada school is usually described as belonging to Hinayana. Some authors have argued that it should not be considered such from the Mahayana perspective. Their view is based on a different understanding of the concept of Hinayana. Rather than regarding the term as referring to any school of Buddhism that hasn't accepted the Mahayana canon and doctrines, such as those pertaining to the role of the Bodhisattva, these authors argue that the classification of a school as Hinayana should be crucially dependent on the adherence to a specific phenomenological position. They point out that unlike the now extinct Sarvastivada school, which was the primary object of Mahayana criticism, the Theravada does not claim the existence of independent entities dharmas. in this it maintains the attitude of early Buddhism. 
Adherents of Mahayana Buddhism disagreed with the substantialist thought of the Sarvastivadins and Satrantikas, and in emphasizing the doctrine of emptiness, Kalupahana holds that they endeavored to preserve the early teaching. The Theravadins too refuted the Sarvastivadins and Satrantikas and other schools on the grounds that their theories were in conflict with the non-substantialism of the canon. The Theravada arguments are preserved in the Kathavathu. Some contemporary Theravadan figures have indicated a sympathetic stance toward the Mahayana philosophy found in texts such as the Heart Sutra (SKT), Prajnaparamita Hridaya, and Nagarjuna's fundamental stanzas on the Middle Way (SKT), Topic: See also. equals equals notes <laughs>